Today's Bible study is the parable of the lost son. And what we're going to do and what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it up into certain parts because certain parts have certain meanings and we can get a little stronger into them. Um, we'll do first verses 11 through 16 and then we're going to go to 17 and 19 and 20 through 24 then 25 through 32 and that will be the end of that chapter but the the main reason we're doing it is because first of all the 11 through 16 is how the son came to be lost okay then we're gonna look at 17 through 19 that looks at the lost son's decision to come to his father to return to his father then we're gonna look at 20 through 24 which speaks to how the father receives his lost son and then 25 through 32, we're going to look at how the older son reacted to this situation. Um, but, so today we'll be covering verses 11 through 16. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth and wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods, that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Ooh. So this is the beginning of the parable of the lost son. And this is telling you how the son came to be lost. The son was prideful, had some arrogance about him. Um, and it speaks mainly of the younger of the two sons. It doesn't speak of the older son as much as it speaks to the younger son and his attitude, and it starts off talking about it. But the older brother is important here, and he will be addressed at the end of the parable. Now, he asked for his goods that belong to him, and in those days, the father could either grant the inheritance before or after his death. So the father you know, even though it was normally done after, the father gave the younger son what he asked for and gave him a special exception to the rule, I guess, or maybe he just said, I'm going to let him do what he wants to do. But the younger son, as you can tell, was motivated by foolishness and greed and pride. He didn't earn what he was getting. It was an inheritance of something that was given to him. So the father here clearly illustrates God's love for us. The Father gave. His love allowed the rebellion and in some sense showed that he had his own will. He, he let him have his free will. His free will was not to stay but to go. Um, and the Father knew that this was a foolish decision on the part of his younger son. Why would you leave feast and go struggle in famine? So he allowed him to go on his course nonetheless because he gave him, hey, that's your choice. So the son left and he went to become this independent man. Um, and he lived a prodigal, which is a reckless, foolish, and extravagant life. He was partying. He was doing his thing. And, of course, it was fun while it was lasting. But reality sets in and you got to put real work in. You can't just party and not have side effects or repercussions from it. So when he spent everything, guess what? <laughs> Here comes that situation, that storm. There arose a severe famine in the land. Uh-oh. I had everything. Now there's a famine. The son was completely to blame on this part because he had wasted everything on his lifestyle. And it, it wasn't his fault about the severe famine. But the famine here 
It's just like any storm or any hardship that comes into our life when we leave the protection of God. We know we need it and we know that things are going to happen. And this happened. But he was affected by this famine. And you notice it says, he has spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land. He, he spent everything. How was he going to do without? How could he provide for himself when in all reality he couldn't provide for himself anyway because everything came from the Father, as it always does? He began to be in want or in need. He needed things. He sent him into the fields to feed the swine. Uh-oh. He needed to eat. <laughs> and he didn't have the means to pay for food. All the friends that had been with him, all the party he had done, they weren't helping him. So what did he do? He had to go into the fields and do labor. And his dad had laborers. He had people that worked, but he had to do it now. And he did this because he was hungry. He had no longer had money. He accepted the work that was unacceptable and offensive to any righteous person, especially the Jews at that time. And you got to remember, swine were considered unclean under their law. So this was really a bad job. And... When they said he even could, he wanted to eat the pod. He was looking at, if you look at this, it says, he longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating. The pods were just the casings. They weren't even the meat, the bean, the actual substance in it. It was just the casing for it. He was that hungry, and he was eating what pigs were eating. And the pigs would eat anything that was put out there. But that's how hungry he was, and no one gave him anything. None of the friends that were at the parties with him, none of the friends who had spent money with him. And this is supposed to make us sympathize with him. But as you sympathize with him, you have to realize that this loss, this lack of having, this misery this hard and burdened life that he was now suffering in and definitely reaping what he had sowed is what drives him back to his good resolution. And that's in the next section, which we will review in the next Bible study. Amen.